Hey folks, how's it going? I'm Josh. We're going to be checking out the Ricky Gervais Show. This is Season 1, Episode 13, guys. Freaks. Alright guys, please continue to leave recommendations below because all our videos are based on your recommendations and comments. And if you are subscribed, we check out those recommendations and those comments first. So let's jump into this episode. Hello and welcome to the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. Hello. questions for Carl, just to sort of try and tap into his brain, see what's going on there. Yeah. The uh, questionnaire that is often featured at the end of the TV programme Inside the Actor's Studio. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Is that how it works? Oh. oh. <laughs> no, what I'm, do you mean? What's the question? Well, I don't know. Do uh, you hear so many other things that you have to go through other gates? I can't imagine him being on the door, is what I'm saying. <laughs> If he owns a place, what's he doing there? He could put <laughs> anyone on it. It's St. Peter, isn't it, who's normally minding the gates, famously. Right, so it's him asking me. OK, well, let's say it's St. Peter. No, 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 you go through the gate, Peter goes, oh, you expected, um, he's got an appointment, we're going through the guard, go through a few doors, go up top floor, right, past the executive washroom, into his big office, OK, that overlooks the universe. So what, what? So you've gone in to see God, it's an audience with God, you've died, you've gone to heaven, mm. and what would you like... God to say to you at that point? Um, probably just, just say, oh, um, you've done well on that in your life. You never did anybody any harm. So, welcome to the to heaven. Any problems, give us a shout. Um, you know, here's a little layout of, of like, a, you know, like a little map. It's kind of like... I love this. This is a great answer. And my favourite one is you never did anyone any harm. That's, that's great. That's a brilliant thing for God to say. Yeah. So, hang on, he's giving you a little map. So, he's giving you a little map of the little area. Map, it's and big. he'll sort of say, this is where you go for this, this is where you go for that. Um, I'd, I'd probably ask him about the ghost situation. I'd say, am I now a ghost then? Or is this just like another pl planet that I've come onto? Right. Uh, I don't know if he'd answer that. I don't know if he'd be sort of a bit... A bit cagey. Yeah. A little bit like, well, I don't want to panic you and stuff. Um, I'd say, right, is it right that I can see past family and that? Because, to be honest, I'd probably prefer to stay away. <laughs> <laughs> <He's never alive. laughs> no, but the thing is, if you've done all, I've done all right in this life, so it's about moving on to another life and meeting different people, isn't it? Yeah, okay. Otherwise, what's the point? It's just yeah. like the same all over again, but everywhere's white. I, I mean, I don't know if it is like Do this. Do you think I'm God just... would like this podcast? Um... Uh, well, I suppose it just kills half an hour, doesn't it? Well, yeah, but time's not a problem for him, is it? Yeah, it is, because he lives for ages, so he needs loads of filler. I bet he's, you know, doing stuff that is just like, I'm not really into this, but it's something to do, isn't it? Sud Sudoku and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but there's, I think there'll be just as many problems up there as there is here, because at least people are leaving here, whereas up there, that's the thing that I'd be worried about the most, actually, that it's really crowded. Because <laughs> it's years and years of dead people, isn't it? <laughs> London is amazing. <laughs> Up there, it's going to be well busier than that. What about teenagers? And um, do you feel that life was better in, say, the 1950s? Uh, I don't know. I wasn't around. So but you understand what it was like in those days? Um, You've seen happy days. I don't know. People always say, don't they? Old people always say, oh, uh, you know, it's a better life in the 50s. And it's like, yeah, it was for them. Of course it was for them. They're old now. Being old isn't great, is it? So you're just happy with your lot. I suppose I was happiest starting about 1984. <laughs> right. Quite a specific year. Why? Why was that? Just I was free and happy. How old, I mean? how old were you? I don't know. Uh, I to... He's just counting on his fingers. I was now. Twelve. Right. Okay. And it was just good. So uh, the happiest days of your life were between the age of 12 and 13. Yeah, it was good. I had the world ahead of me. Mm. Um, Little did you know, your hair was going to fall out and you were going to whinge every minute of the day. I had my bike. <laughs> I like messing about my bike. You had your mates. I had a pet magpie. So you were probably the teenager that you eventually hate? Probably. Were you a good lad, law-abiding? I wasn't bad. I just sort of, you know, just potted about. I mean, when people talk about what was on the telly back then, I, I don't have that much memory of it because I was always out. I was always playing out. What were you doing when you were out? Just playing about, just like on a bike or... Just riding in a circle endlessly through the blizzards, I loved it. rain, sleet, loved hail. It. I never seemed to be in. I was always... When, when everyone always goes, where were you when uh, Band-Aid was happening? I was always out on my bike. And everything was like... Like you and McGregor? 
a, a memory is always sort of like coming in for some orange and looking at the telly and seeing Princess Diana's getting married and my mum says, have you seen this? And I'm going, oh, I'm going out on my bike. I was always doing that. The only time I was in the house... <laughs> this is why you don't know anything, because you never stopped. Yeah, but this yeah. is what being a kid's about. But That's what I mean, being free. you have, Carl, is as though yeah. you've gleaned it as you raced by on a bike. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like, you know, every piece of information you heard. Your hair, your <laughs> hair blowing in the wind. <laughs> Carl, your hair will blow out one day. Oh, don't talk, stupid man. It was, it was easy. So, yeah, 12 to 13 was good. I, not that, that specific age range, but I, I agree. Like, around the time, say maybe around 12 to, like, 14 or 12 to 15, because, like, you can just ex- explore. Like, the internet and stuff existed when I was at that age, but, like, it wasn't, like, a big deal. You know what I mean? You spend most of the time outside. I'm not even an outside person now, um, but spent a decent amount of time outside, and I was used to just go outside to read comics just to get outside or, like, ride my bike somewhere to... To buy comics and most of the stuff was revolved around comics and action figures but still still got out but you see so and it was all downhill from then was it 13 is your teenager then aren't you life got tough yeah how did it get tough just straight away when i was 13 my mum was like you know oh it's your 13th birthday you're a teenager now right and she gave us a quid to go and get a cake to celebrate it <laughs> went to the supermarket got a cake and i just thought i don't like the look of this don't like the look of the way the future is here <laughs> <laughs> on his 13th birthday. <laughs> well, you're buying a cake. What, what did you see the It was kind of like, I don't know, I suddenly felt grown up. I didn't like it. But I think you were always about 58, really, with your outlook. Well, yeah, my mum always said I was old. She said I was an old baby. She said I could frown before I could walk. <laughs> <laughs> she said I always had a bit of a worry look on my face. <laughs> didn't say much, just always listened. My eyes moved about more than I did. Just sat there looking around, <laughs> looking stressed. Uh, <laughs> out more than I did. Oh dear, couldn't walk. Well, I can't walk, but I try and get a bit of movement in my face. Mm, um, it's a yeah. workout, a baby workout. Oh, babies! Well, if you can't walk, what about your face? Let your face do the walking. It sounds like uh, that horror film. It sounds like Pilkington's baby. Yeah. Just you lying there in your cot. I didn't like all the stuff that's set up for you. Like me, me mum tried to send me to um, like a nursery. I said, no, I'm not having this. <laughs> I said, I said Three, when, I'm old, when I'm old and I've got to go, I'll go, but let's leave out this bit. And she said, all right. She was... <laughs> I love that he could reason with her. I love him. He's like, he's three years old with a pipe. She's going, you're going to know. She goes, I, I think not, Mum. <laughs> I mean, kids don't play out, do they? Kids, you know, parents are scared to let the kids play out, and that's why the streets are dangerous now, because no-one's playing out on the streets. Whereas when I was a kid, everyone was out on the streets. The streets were safer, because there was more people knocking about. Right. Let the kids play out. It must be like a constant, like a Larry painting, his front garden, do you know what I mean? <laughs> just loads of people just walking around. There was never around. any problems. I was sort of taken away by some fella. <laughs> what? Who, uh, what? Whoa, 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 no, whoa. no I, was in, I was playing about in the garden. Yeah. But my dad's mate, Tony, yeah. he did tiling with him. He drove past and he saw me looking a bit fed up, so he just leant over, picked me up, took me to the pub. Now, the thing is, he wasn't panicked. People weren't going, oh, God, where's Carl gone? He's out. Just, just... How old were you? He's down in the pub. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's four years old, yeah. <laughs> that... well, he's only having a He's down in the pub with Tony, probably, playing darts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was about three or four. Sorry, so some bloke drives by who happens to be a friend of your dad's, thinks that baby looks grumpy. Yeah. I'm taking him down but to the that's, pub. But that's what it Tony, was like. Tony, you bringing a baby to the pub? Uh, yeah, I might do, yeah, we'll bring in ours. All right, see you later, mate. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying, whereas now they go, the baby's gone, there's a big full-on panic going yeah, on. Yeah, but I think it says more about your parents that they didn't do that. They looked out in the back car and you were gone. Some bloke's driving off in a van, and they're just going, oh, help. Oh. They've down the pub. <laughs> Doesn't Princess Diana look lovely? <laughs> <laughs> this is absurd. So what happened when you got down the pub? I just was there for a bit, and then... Uh, the for, m- for a bit? Just had a game with Paul? Then my dad came in. He was like, oh, there you are. Mm. Oh, there you are! <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I think things were better back then. It's weird how things have changed. I used to be able to go to uh, the gas station and buy my pops, like, cigarettes and stuff like that. Or um, swing by, like, or swing by, um, what do you call, the liquor, like, not not a liquor store, but the bar, and go inside to the vending machine and just buy cigarettes out of the vending machine and bring them home to them. Like, nobody used to stop you. It's, it's, it's crazy. And that wasn't that super long ago. That was in the 90s. Well, it's that time again. It's Carl's Diary. Oh, what's he written today? Told Suzanne that I had read that we will have spoken to aliens by the year 2025. 
<laughs> Ricky once told me that if a lion could speak English, it still couldn't have a good chat with us because its life is different to ours. If that's true, we've got no chance with an alien. I'd be worried that an alien could read my mind. I had that problem once years ago when I worked in a studio making cassettes. Some mind-reading woman was having some cassettes made. She waited while I did them. She had a small dog. I knew she was trying to read my mind, so I just thought about the dog. I thought that would confuse her, because she wouldn't understand why I was thinking about her dog. That's amazing. So, so he, firstly, how did you know she was a mind-reading woman? Everybody who came in having cassettes done, you'd find out about what the job is. So, you know, if it's a band or whatever, it might be a police station needing blank cassettes to interview people. Yeah. And she had them um, to sort of use during a thing where they do mind-reading and stuff. So right. you get a... A recording, a recording of the, of it. Uh, yep. And she was just there and she was staring at me, like that, just looking over. And a dog was sort of looking worried and they pick up vibes, don't they? No. They do. And why was <laughs> they looking, I'm not being funny, were they looking at the roundness of your head, do you think? No, they were just, just looking at me and I was sort of panicking a bit and the more that I was thinking she's reading my mind, I was thinking she's, she knows that I know that she's reading my mind, so I just stopped thinking about her reading my mind, thought about the dog. What were you thinking about the dog? Just running about on the beach. <laughs> He was no, just so she thought, oh, hang on a minute, it's not his mind, it's the dog's mind I'm picking up. <laughs> <laughs> so she thought she'd go, oh, no, I'm not getting it all tangled. I've got a cross line here. I met out with my great. mate Laurie. He said he was in a pub at the weekend and saw a bloke whose hands were on the wrong arms. <laughs> He had his left hand really? on his right arm and the right hand on the left arm. I don't think this would be a problem if he's been like that from an early age. When I was in Ripley's in LA, I saw a bloke whose head was on back to front. That's more annoying, isn't it, than your hands? <laughs> isn't it? Now then, would you walk... How would you walk? Would you be walking backwards, Carl, so that you could walk... So you're basically walking forwards? I reckon or, I'd walk sideways so nobody would sort of tell the difference. It just looked like... <laughs> <laughs> Got home and read the magazine. There was a story about a baby that was born that looked like a frog. <laughs> what magazine's this? Uh, that made the news. That that was in oh. a proper newspaper in the end. It didn't really have a neck or top half of its head. It would look all right if it always wore a scarf and a hat. The world would be a more interesting place if there were loads of different types of humans like there are creatures. Then some people would be good at certain jobs. Spider people, ant people, builders, cockroach people, dustbin men. <laughs> Good idea, right? I mean, I, I, I mean, cockroach men, spider men. What are you talking about? Look at some insects, right? Yeah. They don't have machinery, yet they're getting by, aren't they? They, they, they have their lives like we do. They get up, they wander about, they collect food, they tidy up, they fix stuff, they make their own house. We can't do any of that. So what I'm saying is, why aren't we using them? Why are these cockroaches with all these powers and stuff? Powers going about. So these powers. But how could we use them? How could we harness them? I just them? told you, dustbin men, or or whatever. That no, you you said, if they were also men, if they were cockroach men, where's the? Where's the, You've left a big bit out. But when that one-inch cockroach becomes a six-foot bloke wearing a, a jacket, it's just that we always use insects for like a bit of fun. You, you see flea circuses and all that, which is all very well. But I don't think it's getting the most out of them. <laughs> woke up at 9:55 a.m. As soon as I woke up. <laughs> Moved on like there's no reasoning. We're just gonna move on. <laughs> Up, I looked at Suzanne and she looked at me. I said, "Did I tell you about the immune system?" <laughs> <laughs> Suzanne started laughing. I said, "It's amazing." She said, "Not now." <laughs> Did I tell you about the immune system? Oh, shut up, Carl. Put the oh, God. Ricky makes it oh, so much worse. fucking hell. <laughs> and no, I've never looked up Susan. I gotta, I'm got. i curious what she looks like just from watching this show. And Idiot Abroad. Carl, let's give him a list. Top five something. What, what are you interested in? Are you interested in news, sport, TV, cars, movies, style? I mean, I'm, in, I'm into weird stuff, but it seems a bit tight to stick them in a list. What, like what? Well, like, fr you know, sort of freaky people and that. I've got that, I've got that freak book. But I don't know if they'd be happy if I called one of them and said, good news, you're at number one because you've got four legs or whatever. I don't know. 
you know what I mean? <laughs> OK, then, this is the Carl Pilkington Top 5 Freaks in a number five. Um, probably uh, something not too good at number five, but it's still interesting. Lighthouse Man. Who's that? What's Lighthouse Man? What's Lighthouse Man? It's a fellow with a hole in his head. <laughs> And he, uh, what he does, rather than moan about it, sticks a candle in it. Shut up. What are you talking about? Sticks a candle in it. What are you talking about? Where is the I hole? I bet he didn't call himself Lighthouse Stop Man, it. did he? Well, I don't know. It's just what, what he, 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 he got nicknamed. Because he had this hole. Doctors were like, there's nothing we can do. Can't fill it. Thought, what can I do with it? And it was of the days when there was no electric in that. You had to walk about with a candle. Right. So, hang on a minute. Got okay, a, I can have both got a little candle holder here. Yeah. Stuck a candle in it. He just got nicknamed the Lighthouse Man. <laughs> So again, not I mean, it's not that amazing, but I like the way he, he was sort of energy efficient. Um, so was it in his forehead? No, on the very top of his head. That's perfect. You don't want it in the forehead, Steve. You'd have to walk back with your ridiculous. neck crick. So he was like a kind of human jack o' lantern. Yeah. He's a lighthouse man. What did you see? What, Sorry, what, what, what yeah, better I description do you need that. than the lighthouse man? So yeah, he's probably at number five. Wow, that's at number five, Steve. Number four. What about pig faced woman of Manchester Square? <laughs> God. Again. You're getting what it says in the tin there, aren't you? Right. And it's just this woman who had a face like a pig. <laughs> and uh, the rumour was yeah. that it wasn't a woman. <laughs> Someone said it was a pet bear and they'd shaved it. <laughs> That's what oh, I, God! That's what was, this someone, yes. was this someone you saw? Or no, no, you just this, is, this is going back. This is, this, is, this is years and years ago. Yeah. Uh, when there was loads of, like, weird-looking people. I mean, the fact that it's pig Face Woman of Manchester Square <laughs> yeah. says that there might have been one in... <laughs> Piccadilly Circus? Lexington. Yeah, yeah, whatever. So there was a lot more of them knocking about back then. Let's assume that um, it was a woman, and the first one, you know, the lighthouse fellow, he's a, he's a human. Do you think people would object because of their... Disfigurement, deformity, um, a little bit like being called freaks, do you think? Well, it, it gave them a purpose back then. See, if you were a freak years ago, it was work for you. You'd have these circus things. Mm. Now, if you've got a funny head, you're on the dole. Uh, number three? What about Elephant Man? Right. Stick him at number three. He's, oh, he's, he's number three. He's, not, he's surely the most famous freak ever to have lived, isn't he? He's the one who got me into it. <laughs> right, yeah, sure, he's sort uh, of entry-level freak. Yeah. A uh, gateway freak. Everyone everyone is aware of him. Mm. If the Elephant Man still existed, right, and you got the opportunity to meet him, and you walked in, a couple of questions. One, what would your first reaction be? And two, what would you say to him? What would your first question be? I would react. Well, I've, I've sort of seen him enough now that it wouldn't shock me. Mm -hmm. So I don't even think I'd flinch. OK. Uh, I mean, like I said, when I first saw you, that, that was... <laughs> That was a, a bit weird. Mm. But now, look, I can look at you. I don't double take mm. or anything. Uh, what would I say to him, though? What, what, uh... I'd probably say, where do you get that hat to fit you? <laughs> he always had hat on. Where do you get that from? He's just making fun of him because he's so tall and lanky. I'm guessing that's why. Tall and lanky with glasses. Oh, that's all I can think of. <laughs> oh, that sort of flat cap that he's got. Yeah, yeah that one, didn't he? So, yeah, I'd have him. So he's at number three. Right. Uh, Elephant Man, number three. I can't wait for two and yeah. one. Right, OK, number two. Well, I know two. what my number one is. It's just number two now. I don't know his name, but there's a fella knocking about... Well, I don't think he's around anymore. But he had, like, a normal body. Looking at him, you'd go, what's up with him? He's not a freak. Takes his undies off. He's got two knobs. <laughs> <laughs> right. Wow. Yeah. OK. I mean, there's nowhere to start. Do I you don't think know. he uses them... Alternately, like, have a way out of this one, have a way out of that one, or does he just like spread the load so he's weeing out of both? I don't think he knows. What do you mean, he's sort of like a lucky dip. When he goes to a urinal, yeah. he sort of he can have a little bet with himself. He's just like, I don't know what's going to happen here. So he do you reckon he holds them both them out? Definitely. So he takes his trousers down because I mean, you know, he, yeah, he can't use a Y front, right? Be, uh... Need more like a W front. Yeah. So um, he he pops his pecs down there. I don't think it's that much of a problem. It's not like, uh... Well! <laughs> I don't know. I'd prefer that than Elephant Man's head. Well, of course you would. Well, that's what I'm saying. What if you had Elephant Man's knob? Yeah, but he didn't work like that, did it? That's the thing. They said he had the body of an elephant, but that's the only thing that wasn't of an elephant standard. <laughs> His knob was normal. Whereas with this fella, it's the other way around. Everything normal, took the pants off. Oh, well, what's going on here? <laughs> But why would you ever take his pants off? No, well, I wouldn't. I'm just saying if... But why, I, don't know, I don't know why you'd be in a situation with this man with two knobs standing there with his pants on and you go pop your pants off. 
You're not a doctor. No, I say if I'm waiting in a in a cubicle. Yeah. And he's there. For what? Sure, you're waiting, waiting in a cubicle. Have, I'm, waiting to have, I'm waiting to have a wee at a cubicle. He's oh, taking two urinals up. And go, right. hang on, you don't need them both, do you? He goes, well, actually. Oh, and then have a look at this. Right. He's got two knobs. See, I, I didn't see him at two urinals. I saw him at one, maybe with them pointing inwards. If you had that, and you, and the, say the first time that you met Suzanne, would you mention that straight up? Would you say, right, before this goes any further, I've got something to show you? Well, let's see, exact, tell me exactly what you would say. Uh, you had normal head then, didn't you? I had, I had the same head, yeah. Yeah, but it had, like, hair in, coming out of it, didn't it? And sort yeah, of... yeah, but she also had a, a smaller arse back then as well, so <laughs> I think we've both been done. Anyway, we need to get to number one. <laughs> yeah, number one. OK, it is. It's, uh, it's Pillow Man. Oh, yeah. Pillow Man. Pillow OK, man. now explain for those that don't know who he was. He's, uh, he's a fella with uh, no arms and legs, mm -hmm. just a head and a little body, nicknamed Pillow Man. Well, why is he your favourite? Just because he's amazing. Just the way he, uh, he just got on with his life. He used to light a cig, just using his, like, his lips and his, his tongue and that. Oh, I've and seen not, this. Not it's fully a... lit. He'd buy, like, roll your own. Yeah, it's, uh, it's in the film Freaks, isn't it? Yeah. And he, he, he rolls had a shave it. as well. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Really do you think he, he used to do it, he used to get it in his mouth and I don't know. Jesus. It's amazing. Did he have, did he have a knob? I think he did, because he had some kids. What? Mm. Yeah, he had kids. He was an alright-looking fella. He wasn't, he wasn't odd-looking. He's just sorry? No, he looked like Samuel L. Jackson. Imagine him with no arms and legs. Right, that's odd, though, isn't it? Really? Um, he's weird, but you've got to give it to him. You know, I mean, he's, he's there rolling his own. He's pretty cool looking. I just want to say to people, it's not, you say it looks cool to, you know, with no arms and no legs to smoke, but don't forget that smoking can stunt your growth. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, remember, he was on, like, this, this circus freak show thing with, yeah. like, a bearded woman. Yeah. Right? Um... Which isn't really a freak, is it? She's going to have a shave. Have a shave, you're not a freak anymore. Yeah. A bearded woman. Compared to a fellow who's got no arms and legs, a bearded woman, you're get out. <laughs> um, but there was, there was like a fellow with, with uh, no bottom half to his body get out. Uh, called Johnny Eck, was his name. Oh. Uh, so, you know, when you're knocking about with that crowd, <laughs> you're going to get, get a bit. Out. You're going to get a bit. So, yeah, he had kids and they were all normal kids. They had all the legs. Did his and wife had arms and legs? Never saw his wife. Never saw his wife. I think he's. He was probably ashamed of her. She was a bit of a freak. For someone like him, you'd think he'd just give up, wouldn't you? You'd think, forget it. What sort of life is it? Yeah. I'm like a, a Mexican jumping bean. <laughs> <laughs> it's not worth living. But he just got on with it. <laughs> he, I mean, to have a shave, I, I don't even bother having a shave sometimes. No, no. Nor did the bearded lady. Lazy fucking bitch. So that's why <laughs> I've put him at my number one position. Uh, it's just amazing, isn't it? The human, you know, how, how, you know, whatever you dealt, some people just get on with it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the pillow man, or draft excluder, as I prefer to call him. <laughs> there you go. The draft oh. excluder. Now, me and Steve are a couple of big shots. We do this for a laugh, but this is Carl Pilkington's only source of income. This is what you do now, isn't it? This is me full time job, yeah. What do you think of that? Is it this uh, me. Why? This isn't what I ever wanted. Because <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got a purpose, have I? I'm sat here talking about the pillow, man. <laughs> if it weren't for him, I'd have nothing to say. It just depresses me that I just wish I had a job where I felt like I was needed. <laughs> and I don't feel needed. It's not a proper job. We need you, no, no, we need you for money for old room. Oh, know, God, I guess. Isn't, I, I, I wanted something that, you know, when you, get, when you die and that, it's, you know, you get up to the gates, whatever, and they say, what have you done? I should stop laughing. I like Carl a lot, but it's still funny. It? <laughs> and then I'm looking worried, thinking, is the pillow man about? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Carl, you are you are needed, man. I know, like, the show's over and everything, but, like, Jesus, man. If I would have never discovered you, I would have to laugh at this every single day. That stinks that this dude has brought smiles to so many people's faces, and he feels useless. Like, he doesn't really bring anything to the table, man. That's just... Ah. Uh, Jesus. It's easy to be the person who pokes fun at what you say. It's really hard to be true to yourself. Actually, actually be true to yourself and use your own words and actually use your own thoughts. That takes a lot of courage to be that way. And, um... So he should be proud of that in a sense because it's, it's, it's easy to just to kind of sit there and poke fun at what somebody else is, somebody else says, but it's it's admirable to actually be somebody like Carl who says what's on his mind, 
no matter how it can't be it can be an unpopular opinion. He can say something that that he just read once and said with confidence. And if you try to disprove it, like he's like, it is what it is. And he moves on. That's just what I read. It's hard to be that person. It's easy to kind of poke fun of a person like that who says something really goofy. You just kind of add on top of it. So I, I can, they all bring something to the table on the show. I think the, the show wouldn't work without the way they kind of like play on each other. They do a really good job. But Carl's fantastic, man. Like Carl is, he's my, of course, he's the favorite, my favorite part of the show. Uh, like like it, it revolves around him. I gotta have to listen to some um, full podcast to like really really enjoy because it it's great. They're I don't know it's like poking they they just can't call him a bear but I guess the best thing is like poking a bear like get him into the corner just mess with him just to get the best out of him. It's fantastic man. He's Jesus. <laughs> oh Carl's awesome man. The dude is fantastic. And he obsessed with freaks like. I never heard of Pillow Man. I heard of Elephant Man. But the Candle Guy, I never heard of that. I still have to look up uh, Suzanne. It's funny how he's just done with it. Like how she just acts like like she's just doing whatever he tries to talk about something. How she says she like in his diary, like she just doesn't bother. Like uh, he, like how he says she answers like she's not listening. The dude's childhood. My mom had a very, um, and I don't want to put this like my mom didn't care about us, but she had a, a kind of like a more of a hands-off approach. Like she, no, she taught us a whole lot about taking care of ourselves and she trusted us enough like to do the right thing after that like she um because my mom worked two jobs and stuff like that then my pops who's my um my stepdad came into our lives and same thing he he, he taught us a lot but same thing fairly like hands off like that teaches us what, what not to do that teaches um like my brother once he was like I don't know, like 11 or 12, my older brother, he would be the babysitter and stuff like that. So we, we became more independent. My mom taught us how to cook, how to clean, everything about taking care of ourselves. So one of the main things my mom used to say, she'll was, she was never want us to be stuck in a relationship because we don't know how to do things. So she like taught us how to pay bills. Mom taught us how to stitch up clothes, the whole shebang, how to take care of yourself 100%, be 100% independent. Because what happens, a lot of people get into like, uh, what happens, there's nothing wrong with it, but you get into like gender roles. And you get into a relationship where, like, you can't manage money or pay bills. Because I have friends like this who they just hand their whole check over to their wife. There's nothing wrong with trusting your wife, but they hand the whole, hand the whole thing over to them. And if the wife were to leave one day, because at the end of the day, I mean, you got to be realistic. You can love somebody and feel like they're the right person for you. The person might not have the same thoughts. Or, like, love can change. You never know. Stuff just happens in people's lives. So it stinks to be in a position where, like, you don't know how to do anything for yourself because such and such did it. So... I'm really big on being independent. I'm really big on, um, I'm really big on like keeping things, certain things like separate. Cause a lot of stuff like, um, this, it starts arguments and I don't like to argue or fight. That's why me and Tay work so well together. Cause her and I, we don't, we don't fight. We might disagree on some things, but it's never like a battle. If you know what I mean? So I know a lot of people say, you, you know, you love each other when you, when you fight. I think that some people misconstrued that message. I think you know you love each other when you fight for the relationship and you do what you need to do to repair things if there if there are small issues that can be fixed. Um, because most things in relationships can be fixed if you just talk through it. That's what I think they mean by like um, you know you love each other when you fight. Uh, things like actually fighting for your relationship and doing things like don't do anything you don't do anything yourself that you don't want your partner to do. Because I see a lot of people kind of do that kind of thing where they they'll, they'll do something they can get away with, but they know that it'll drive it like it'll pee them off if their wife did it. Like sitting around like um talking to like a a random lady at like a at places that kind of what do you call that are set up for those type of things like bars. Usually people meet people in bars. And not you don't really go there necessarily to meet like a a, a new lifelong friend or talk about video games something like that. You're meeting at a bar and you're hanging out with like a some i guess uh, some chick and having a conversation with her and getting real flirty with each other i kind of jazz say how would you feel if your wife was out there doing that with a guy you know what i mean but i see guys who make excuses like well it's just innocent fun flirting with each other like do but like that leads to stuff so i really yeah i really like that i i, I, I would like to see more i would like I'd like i would like to see what susan looks like because i like to hear a little bit more about his relationship and everything. I'm not sure how I got on this subject. I think just because I was thinking about like Susan and stuff like that. That's all I can really think of. But I really like this, man. I really like this show. I really like Carl. Carl's awesome. Um, his parents have a fairly like, they're, they're super hands off. My mom had a pretty, that's why I got to it. Because my mom's hands off approach and what she taught us and stuff like that about um, relationships and being independent and how that can be, um, they can make the difference between like, a, I guess a make or break you kind of relationship. So, 
yeah, I really enjoyed this. I really enjoyed this show. Hopefully, um, we, me and Tay and I schedule sync up a little bit more where we can do more of these together. Where um, where we get the same off days and stuff like that. But that just like most of you know, if you both working couples, if you and your wife both work, it's kind of hard to find a window to do stuff together. And when we do do stuff together, I try to, when we do have a window we spend time with each other, I try not to use it up um, all the time on like this. Cause just because I love doing it, it's not fair to like, oh man, let's go do some more of these, baby. I love like doing this. Like, I'm not, it's, you know, it's give take. You got to kind of like, we're doing something. Like so sometimes when we get the free time together, I, if I know we're going to like, say for example, if I get off work at five o'clock and she's going to get off work at like, I don't know, seven or eight or something like that. Um, I'll try to get all like get off. I'll get off work, get this stuff like done, and then I find like a one that when she gets off, find like a window of something for us to do. Like she likes horror films, I like, make her watch a horror movie, um, order some pizza or something like that. Uh, we'll have a discussion about like because her and I read fairly different books, so like we'll have a discussion about our books. I'll talk about she'll talk about what she read. I'll talk about what I read. Yada yada yada, and. That's because every so often you get a book that you want to experience personally. But sometimes it's almost like when you're in a relationship with somebody who reads and you both reads. It's kind of fun because as much as I enjoy reading, sometimes it's fun to kind of get like the, I guess, the cliff the cliff notes. It's a different experience when you read the whole thing, but it's cool. Like if it's a book I'm just kind of interested in, I don't necessarily want to read the whole thing. It's cool that she's super interested enough where she'll read it and then she kind of goes through the book and like what message she got out of it. And same thing with some books that she that she, she gets a little interested in when she sees me reading and I kind of go over like the cliff notes with her. So it's almost like a two for one. Both read a book, share it with each other. It's like we both read two books. You know what I mean? So, yeah. That's all, guys. I don't want to ramble on too, too long about this. I really enjoy this episode. I really enjoy uh, just learning more about Carl. Like, you always get a little tidbit, and it's funny how he talks about, like, it's normal. And they're like, dude, your parents just let some guy pick you up. Like, yeah, that's normal life. <laughs> uh, just like when I tell people I used to go and buy um, cigarettes and stuff for my pops and all that jazz. So, like, man, that's crazy. Like, yeah. And that wasn't that long ago. It's crazy. Ugh. All right, guys, that is all for this one. Um, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for getting us so high on the subscriber count. We're over 30,000 now, and that is super awesome. And keep the suggestions coming, guys. I'm digging into the comments as fast as possible because I'm balancing the comment section itself. If anybody who else who does like YouTube is like that, you'll know. The comment section itself is like a like a second job. Just going through and answering each one and then trying to get back an answer and response to like the questions that you gave us. Like it's, sometimes it's a job in itself. So I'm, I'm trying to get through... The videos, the comments, and all that jazz, and and continue to add to like the what do you call it, the suggestion list. And I've really been enjoying this. This has been really um really fun for me. So thanks again, guys. And I really hope that you guys are out there being happy, safe, and healthy. And I'll see you in the next one later.